This is an overview of my 904C filter coupler for Eurorack. Uh, first thing that needs to be said is this is only useful if you already have a Behringer 904A low pass filter and a 904B high pass filter. Without those, this module doesn't do anything. The coupler connects via its rear panel to the signal input and outputs on the low and high pass filter and again via the rear panel to the control voltage inputs. It has two controls, one for center frequency and one for bandwidth and a three position switch giving off, band reject and band pass positions. It has to be said that the use of the filter coupler is not essential to get band reject or band pass but it does ease the patching of them. You can get both band reject and or band pass with external patching without the use of the filter coupler. The coupler connects to the low pass filter and the high pass filter on the rear of the PCBs via Molex connectors and these connections can be eased using my own what I've called universal daughter boards which are designed to fit behind various Behringer System 55 modules and provide an easy method of connecting modules behind the front panel and also includes a breadboard area for your own modifications. First thing I'm going to do is demonstrate how the centre frequency and bandwidth controls work. To do this I'm going to turn the low pass filter to start with up into oscillation and select, doesn't matter whether it's band reject or band pass modes, select band reject. So we've got band reject and if I turn the filter control we get a reaction. So on the filter coupler if we move the center frequency control to the right frequency increases, to the left frequency decreases. And the bandwidth control, again this is with the low pass filter, to the right frequency increases, to the left frequency decreases. Now we'll take a look at the effect of the controls on the high pass filter. The problem with the high pass filter is it doesn't have built in regeneration. So what I've done is taken the signal output via a multiple to a CP3 mixer which is off screen and then back to the signal input. I'm also tapping off from the multiple to get the signal. So if I turn up the CP3 mixer we get an oscillation. So if I change, move the high pass filter control, that moves. Now, filter coupler. If I move the center frequency control, right increases the frequency, left decreases the frequency. So far so good. But now the difference. Bandwidth control. Right decreases the frequency, left increases the frequency. So, the bandwidth control operates opposite for the low pass filter and for the high pass filter. While the frequency control affects both filters the same, the bandwidth control acts opposite on the high pass filter to the way it acts on the low pass filter. If you move the bandwidth control to increase the bandwidth, the low pass filter cutoff frequency will increase the high pass filter cutoff frequency will decrease. Similarly, if you reduce the bandwidth, the low pass filter frequency will decrease, but the high pass frequency filter will increase. Now, it is quite possible, therefore, to get effectively a negative bandwidth, which in band reject mode means there is no rejection at all, and in band pass mode means there is no pass band at all. So in one case you'll have in the band reject case you'll have 
an unaffected output effectively. In the bandpass case, you'll effectively get no output. So the filter coupler is very sensitive to how you set the controls. In the Moog operating instructions, it indicates how to set the controls on the high and low pass filter. With the low pass filter, the fixed control voltage is to maximum and the frequency range is 2. And with the high pass filter, the frequency range is minus 1 or minus 2, frequency range low. That's the best starting point. Now a word about how the modules are interconnected. The filter coupler takes the centre frequency CV inputs, two sockets, sums it with the centre frequency control, and in the case of the low pass filter, adds the bandwidth voltage, both from the control and from the input socket, and sends that to the low pass filter. This goes to what in Moog terms is called the control node, which is the summing node for all of the control voltages. High pass filter similarly with the only difference that the bandwidth control voltage from the control and from the input socket is subtracted from the centre frequency. Depending on how the coupler is set, whether it's off, band reject or band pass mode, the output of either the high and or low pass filters is sent to the filter coupler signal out. When band reject or band pass are selected, you can still connect to the signal out on either the high pass filter or the low pass filter and tap the output at that point. One thing you can't do, even though I am deliberately breaking the rules up to this point in the demonstration, is when band reject or band pass are selected on the filter coupler, the filter coupler is connected directly to the low pass filter and high pass filter signal in. If you connect something else to them, you're effectively shorting two connections. This is exactly how the original Moog module worked. It is possible to modify the Behringer filter circuit boards to allow a normalised connection but that is a relatively complex operation that requires removal of sockets, which I won't go into here. Now I've patched just a straight sawtooth wave into the input to the filter coupler, and I'm taking the audio directly from the output of from the filter coupler. At the moment, filter coupler's turned off, so we have no output. So if I turn it to band reject, and if we modify the, I'll take bandwidth to the zero position, and if we modify the centre frequency, now with a wider bandwidth, and a narrower bandwidth. Now switching to band pass, we're getting nothing obviously due to the settings of the controls. Wider bandwidth. Narrower bandwidth. So the effect, as you can see, is quite subtle. Repeating, but with a square wave this time. Band reject. Wide bandwidth. Narrow bandwidth. Switching to band pass. Wide bandwidth. Narrower bandwidth. And now with a narrow pulse waveform. Band reject. And band pass.
One thing you may have noticed is a lot of the control, particularly on the frequency control, is on the upper half of the control and less noticeable on the lower half. Um, part of that is because the camera microphone doesn't reproduce bass frequencies as well, but I have noticed that the control does seem to be on the upper side. But this filter coupler is calibrated and is producing the voltages that are specified on the Moog service sheet. OK, I've now patched in uh, a couple of low frequency oscillators. Um, for information, one of them going to the frequency control is a Behringer 921 using the auxiliary output and the other one going to the bandwidth control is a 901B oscillator via a 901C output stage. Um, both are set to sign. Um, so if we now switch to band reject, initially the levels of the modulation are zero, so it's static. So if I get which LFO I'm using, if I turn up the waveform going into the center frequency, So that's in band reject and in band pass. Okay, so if we turn that level of modulation down band reject and I'll now modulate the bandwidth This is still with just a narrow pulse waveform. And if we now switch to band pass, so this is a fixed center frequency now, but modulating the bandwidth. I switch back to the sawtooth wave input on the pink wire to the filter coupler. Sol. If we switch to band reject and we turn up both the modulations, so if I speed up the bandwidth, That's a relatively slow modulation of the frequency, a faster modulation of the bandwidth. If I slow down the bandwidth modulation and speed up the frequency. And we'll try it in bandpass mode. band reject mode and just playing with the speed of the LFOs. So that's the 904C filter coupler.